New details this morning in the trafficking case against Sean Diddy Combs. Prosecutors now claiming that from behind bars, Combs has been trying to reach out to victims and possible witnesses. Sean Diddy Combs, the renowned music mogul and former hip hop icon, found himself at the center of a storm, one that threatened to unravel the empire he had spent decades building. At 55 years old, Combs was facing a federal trial that would determine whether he was guilty of trafficking, racketeering, and multiple counts of abuse and exploitation. His life, once filled with chart-topping hits, luxury, and celebrity, had quickly descended into a legal nightmare that left him behind bars in a Manhattan detention facility. The charges were serious and the stakes were high. In addition to the criminal accusations, Combs was also facing numerous civil suits from both men and women who accused him of assault and other forms of misconduct. The most publicized of these suits came from his ex-girlfriend, Cassandra Cassie Ventura, who filed a civil lawsuit alleging rape and physical assault during their tumultuous relationship, which lasted from 2007 to 2018. The case was quickly settled, but it set off a chain reaction that led to a federal investigation and the charges Combs now faced. As Combs' trial loomed, the legal drama took a darker turn. Prosecutors claimed that from his jail cell, the once powerful mogul had continued his pattern of manipulating those around him, using his influence to contact potential witnesses in an attempt to derail the case. According to court documents, Combs had been making relentless efforts to influence witness testimony by using other inmates' phone accounts and three-way calls to communicate with individuals not on his approved contacts list. Prosecutors allege that he had not only reached out to people directly connected to the case, but had also instructed his family to contact witnesses on his behalf, urging them to either alter their stories or remain silent. In the court filing, prosecutors detailed their findings from a review of recorded phone calls. These calls allegedly showed that Combs had attempted to coach witnesses and tamper with potential testimony, even using social media to publicly push his narrative. One of the most damning pieces of evidence was an Instagram post made by a woman known only as Witness 2, which seemed to contradict accusations made by singer Don Richard in a civil lawsuit against Combs. Prosecutors claimed that the statement from Witness 2 was not made of her own volition, but rather was written with Combs' input during multiple texts and calls from his jail cell. They further suggested that Combs had paid the woman to post the statement, thus attempting to manipulate the public and the jury pool before the trial even began. Judge Arun Subramanian, who is overseeing the case, ruled that the U.S. Attorney's Office for the Southern District of New York cannot use the material or any excerpts from it during Combs' upcoming bail hearing on Friday. The judge said he would examine the materials and weigh in on whether that can be used at trial. Mr. Combs' defense team claimed that government prosecutors illegally seized his personal notes during a search of his jail cell at the Metropolitan Detention Center in Brooklyn, where he has been detained since his arrest on the 16th of September in the lobby of a Manhattan hotel. They argued some of the materials detailed information that is protected under attorney-client privilege, which shields information discussed between a client and an attorney. The musician, who is best known for 1990s hits such as I'll Be Missing You and Mo Money, Mo Problems, has been denied bail since his arrest, with multiple judges citing a risk that he might tamper with witnesses. He's currently in custody in Manhattan. His lawyers made a renewed bid for bail last week, proposing a $50 million 39.6 million pounds package that would see Mr. Combs be monitored around the clock by security personnel while under house arrest. Lawyer Alexandra Shapiro argued it was impossible for the musician to prepare for trial from behind bars because of the incredibly voluminous amount of material to review, especially without a laptop computer. She also said his preparation has been hampered by conditions at the jail, including frequent lockdowns and officers taking away the pens he uses to take notes. Detention is stripping Mr. Combs of any real opportunity to be ready for trial, violating his rights under the U.S. Constitution, Shapiro said. As the allegations mounted, Combs' defense team worked furiously to protect his image and secure his release on bail. Despite the gravity of the charges, they argued that Combs had been unfairly detained and was being denied his constitutional right to adequately prepare for his trial. Combs' attorney, Alexandra Shapiro, made a compelling case for bail, presenting a $50 million package that would place Combs under house arrest with constant monitoring by private security personnel.
She argued that, without access to the necessary resources and documents, Combs was effectively being prevented from preparing for his defense. Shapiro described the jail conditions as inhumane, pointing out that frequent lockdowns and restricted access to basic supplies like pens and computers made it impossible for Combs to review the voluminous amount of evidence against him. But prosecutors were unsympathetic. They vehemently opposed the request for bail, pointing to Combs' past behavior as evidence that no set of conditions could prevent him from continuing his attempts to manipulate the case. They emphasized the musician's uncanny ability to get others to do his bidding, whether it was through his employees, family members, or fellow inmates. The prosecution argued that even private security personnel would not be immune to Combs' influence, suggesting that his wealth and power would allow him to continue orchestrating efforts to interfere with witnesses and the legal process should he be granted bail. The prosecutors also noted that Combs' defense team had tried to influence public perception through social media and public statements. One example they cited was a video posted by Combs' children on November 5th in which they wished their father a happy birthday while he was still in prison. The video, prosecutors claimed, was part of a larger public relations strategy designed to sway the potential jury pool. Combs allegedly monitored the video's analytics closely, discussing the engagement levels with his family and advising them on how best to manage the media his impact on the case. The prosecutors argued that this was further evidence of Combs' attempt to control the narrative from behind bars. In addition to the social media posts and phone calls, Combs was also accused of using the phone accounts of at least eight other inmates to make calls, a clear violation of prison rules. Prosecutors claimed that Combs had directed others to arrange payment for this access, further showing his disregard for the law. In their filing, they described a relentless scheme to contact potential witnesses, some of whom were victims of Combs' alleged abuse in order to either intimidate them into silence or manipulate their testimony to his advantage. Throughout the hearings, Combs sat quietly in the courtroom, his expression neutral, but his demeanor tense. Despite the seriousness of the charges and the mounting evidence against him, he maintained his innocence, insisting that the sexual encounters at the heart of the case had been consensual. His legal team argued that he had been targeted because of his celebrity status and that the prosecution's case was built on flimsy evidence and baseless accusations. They pointed to the lack of physical evidence and the fact that many of the claims were based on testimonies from individuals with questionable motives. In a separate development, another legal battle emerged for Combs, this time involving Tony Busby, the attorney responsible for filing numerous lawsuits against him. A high-profile individual filed a lawsuit against Busby, accusing the lawyer of attempting to extort him by threatening to make public fabricated sexual assault allegations. Busby denied the accusations, describing the lawsuit as an attempt to intimidate or silence him. He claimed that his demand letters were no different from those routinely sent by lawyers in similar cases. As Combs' trial date drew nearer, the world continued to watch closely whether he would be able to mount a successful defense, avoid further legal troubles, and clear his name remained uncertain. What was clear, however, was that Combs' actions in the courtroom and behind bars would play a pivotal role in the case that could ultimately determine his fate. What are your thoughts on Sean Diddy Combs' legal battles? Do you believe the allegations against him, or is it all a media setup? Share your thoughts in the comments section, and make sure to subscribe and like if you enjoyed the video.